Welcome to Tactical Reviews and this is a TCH special so total control handcuffs and in particular featuring the twin lock range a, an innovation of TCH and in this video we're going to look at all the main styles available so we have chain, hinged, rigid folding rigid the various accessories so we have several different pouches a look at keys and we also have training protectors small wrist adapters and I'll also take a look as we go through each model at some of the details of the operation so with the double locking, uh, back loading, what you need to know about unlocking. Uh, I'm also including a special section on security. So TCH specific security, uh, the triple pull, and also a, a little bit of an aside looking at modified keys. This is something we'll take a much closer look at. And in Another section will look at actual handcuffing techniques, so palm to palm, back to back, stacked front and rear. So what we'll do now is I'm going to take these in order, start off with a chain model and work my way through and we'll have a much closer look at each of these. So starting off with one of the most traditional styles the the chain handcuff in this case it's the TCH 822 in a black finish it's the only one of these in that uh, that finish and in a leather pouch what I'll have in the description of the video is a full listing of all the models shown along with uh, matching pouch information um, so you don't need to remember all the numbers as we go through or rewind it'll be in the description so just high quality pouch it's going to last for years and years very thick leather nicely stitched So all of the, the TCH models that would come with two of the standard key. There are a couple of extra key styles available and we'll take a look at those a little bit later. So here with the, the chain model and as I mentioned this is the 822. And the first thing, uh, this video is featuring the twin lock. So this is a, a special design feature of TCH where you'll see a, it should be more visible on some of the other models, but here's our standard keyway. And depending on how they've been fitted, you may or may not have easy access to the side of the cuff that has the keyway. So TCH have, while keeping all of the standards that are required for handcuffs, uh, they have managed to fit in a second keyway. So on the other side of the cuff, you have another keyway. So regardless of which way the, the cuffs are fitted, you'll always have an easy access. So all of the cuffs in this video are twin lock. So they're all available as a twin lock style. So I think uh, as we have several different models to look at, what I'm gonna just pick up is a few of 
the features. We'll look at those in more detail on some of the other models. But you'll notice in the design there is a groove and in the plates of the cuff there is a it's a part that's been pressed in to fit into that groove so that as force is applied to the cuff that provides strength and stability and prevents the cuff releasing adding an, a considerable amount of strength so here we can see operating one keyway and the other keyway so always easy access so I'm just going to move on to the next style, the hinged cuffs. And here we have the H32. So as is, I believe, a requirement for the handcuff standards, uh, every pair of handcuffs has a unique serial number so they can be identified. With the hinged style, you start to introduce some stability. You can't twist the cuffs. And this immediately allows for a different style of cuffing. So with a chain cuff, those are free to move. So if a person is cuffed doesn't matter which way the hand goes through, they can twist and allow that person to move their hands to where they want. With a hinged model, if a, a wrist is fitted in one direction, we'll move on to the handcuffing styles right at the end of the video, but now, if the cuffs are fitted with hands going in different directions, you can't twist around and get your hands into the same direction. Okay, so just quick aside, by introducing the hinge rather than the chain, you gain quite a lot of stability. So again, um, now these are the 832, which is the standard hinged model. In this other style of case, again, leather, we have the lightweight version, the 932, where a proportion, I'm not completely certain how much, uh, but it's made of aluminium in part or more considerably, and the weight difference is quite considerable. In fact, quick break, I'll just get some scales out. Okay, so we're just having a quick look at the weight difference between the lightweight and the standard so the standard hinged cuff is 327 grams the lightweight which you can feel a considerable difference is 220 so you lose a third of the weight by having the lightweight model. Just while we're at it, let's see what the chain one is. 
that's 276. So it fits a little bit in between uh, the steel chain cuffs. They still feel quite heavy. But overall they're lighter than the, the steel hinged. The lightweight are a very nice saving in weight that you can carry all the time. Okay, so that was the weight comparison. So just as we've been looking at the two hinged models and we've got the leather pouch for these models, um, just something to point out is Obviously this has got a, a, a little cutout for quick and easy access. When you put the cuffs in the pouch, you want to put them so the hinge is in first. And that just means that when you come to grab them in a hurry, the fingers go in and grab. If you were to put them in the other way up, you haven't got easy access. So it should be pretty obvious, but that's what that cutout's for quick and easy removal of the cuffs. And with the sort of more traditional handcuff pouch, which when you're putting the chained handcuffs in, you can pop them in with the lock mechanism to one side and the strap comes over nicely. A little thing to watch out for, uh, there are some compatibilities listed where this pouch is also suitable for the hinged model. There's actually a version with a slightly longer strap because when you start trying to fit the hinge in this, it doesn't really fit it but you can force it, but it distorts the pouch. There is a pouch with a longer strap for the hinged model. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna take a look at is the rigid, I've gotta zoom out tight slightly. Okay, so and this was really revolutionary. Um, in fact, a, an innovation of TCH's predecessor, Hyatt, so that's a name you may be familiar with, uh, but now TCH is the company producing these. And these completely changed the way that handcuffs could be fitted, force could be applied, and getting the job done. So, as you see here, because they're rigid, they are taking up more space. So that's a compromise, and unlike folding ones, they stay large. So we have quite a specialised pouch for this, take into account the size they are. And what we have here, the pouch arrives with a label and it talks about a special type of popper system. Now I'm going to zoom right back in for this. So we have a dot just on one of the poppers. Now this is actually a sort of military invention for the popper and it limits the way that it can open to only where the dot is. And this is really important both for how you use it and not damaging the actual holster, uh, but also in the way that if you look how 
the strap comes across there's quite a lot of tension here and if this were a standard popper that would just open at the back here so instead we have a standard popper for stability at the front just pop that and now only following the dot can I lift that and then that will release the handcuffs so when reinserting in fact if you look in inside let's point this out with a key so this is the part the only part am I getting that right no so in a normal popper you have this sprung ring which moves around everywhere in the only at the dot opening opposite the dot is a fixed part now this does not spring instead the spring comes in front of it so as this part is fitted you have to start by feeding that onto the popper before you can click it down at which point it can't lift at the back and then the second popper just provides stability for that flap so that's the rigid holster popper flap detail let's come back out again and take a look at these Okay, so also, oh, did I point that out on the on the hinge ones? So twin lock, standard keyway, second keyway, which especially on hinged and rigid cuffs makes a big difference to the accessibility of the keyhole. So yes, hinged ones also twin lock. Then the rigid twin lock. Standard keyway, twin lock keyway. And so here we see we have a large grip section and completely rigid cuffs allowing for direct application of force this is also where it becomes most appropriate uh, to have a look no i'll wait another section for that uh, let's just say these are the 842, I think it's the 840 that's the single keyway version. Always a nice quick action. So there we have our rigid cuff. And final type is a folding rigid. So here we take the rigid concept, the hinged concept, and put them together. So, specialised pouch for these because the rigid folding part is a little bit chunky. 
but again beautifully made thick leather sheath holster for the folding rigid here I've got them in what's more of a, a training color the, the red and again we'll see in a moment these are twin lock and having opened them up they have become rigid they've locked into place and this requires the key to unlock these are the 852 and we have primary keyway to unlock keyway so either side of the cuff you can unlock them so standard handcuff key and we have standard lock and the folding lock Okay, so as we've gone through, we've covered the pouches. Now I'm going to have a look at some of the other extras. And we'll run through those. So again, to mention all uh, model numbers and will be included in the description. So, in terms of accessories, um, these are a, a training sort of mitt, which just helps protect your wrist uh, in those instances where there's lots of repeated cuffing, an impact point, so just a, a neoprene sort of cuff, so that with repeated fitting, and removal you have some protection not something that we you, you would use uh, apart from when training so just remove this from myself so next thing to look at are some of the alternate keys so standard handcuff key that comes with all the models there are uh, which I haven't got here some that are termed as training keys while we were looking at the training protectors they're a small stubby key that stays in the lock basically so you never have to look for the key you just turn it um, but these two keys for more heavy duty regular repeated use just give you a couple of options so big key ring you have the double locking pin uh, this is free to rotate and then with a standard key fitment Again, another style where with a flat section you just get a little bit more leverage if you want it or need it and all TCH standard so operating a couple of different key options I've also got here the small wrist adapter so the idea here is that in normal use you have a, a minimum size which if somebody were able to get their hand out of the cuff you can add a reducer that 
makes the opening smaller. So just a couple of notes about this. So if we look at the shape of this, it has a, a hump at one end with a little button. Zoom in. Look at this. So there's a little button which acts a little, basically like a spring retainer. Although, as I've discovered, sometimes this becomes a casualty, and we'll see that once fitted, you you lose being able to push the arm all the way through. So you have to unlock to get the cuff back again. And with this one, you can see I've actually lost that little retainer. It's got cut off by the by the handcuff itself in fitting. But what you do is you take this hump towards the pivot pin and if you press the little retainer in as you go then that squeezes up into place and you push it round till it's hitting the top of the arm and it's in this position that it has clearance So that's the reducer fitted. Right now we're gonna go through some of the basic operations and we'll use a hinged model, the 832, and I'll also show you with the rigid 842. So for those that don't know, as the ratchet arm moves through, if this is fitted to a wrist, it can continue to tighten. And if it gets very tight on the wrist, it can cause damage, nerve damage, and some real problems. So, once the cuffs are fitted, you then have the option to activate the double lock, which has two benefits. So at this point, without the double lock, if somebody had a shim, they could potentially slide it against and over the ratchets and open the cuffs without a key. With a double lock, which is activated by pressing in this pin. At that point, the, the ratchets are actually locked in place. Now that means that you can't close that cuff anymore. And it also prevents shim opening. So to open that, if we have a look at the end with the pin, so you can see not locked, it's not double locked, this is double locked. So we actually turn the key, first of all, the opposite way to you normally unlocking, and that's brought the pin forward of the double lock. And then we can turn the other way and open the cuffs. So if that's double locked, and I attempt to turn the key the normal way, it does not move. So I have to undo the double lock and then unlock the cuff. So with the, especially with hinged and rigid models, let's use the, the rigid, we have that concept of really slapping on the handcuff. And what we do here is what's called backloading. So from there being no ratchet engagement at all, 
what we actually want is a little bit of resistance to this. So if this is flopping around, it's, it's completely unstable. So in the instructions provided by TCH, they talk about applying pressure to the rotating arm and in doing that it should click on to a couple of ratchets. Now I am starting to apply pressure and I haven't managed to get that to move at all. So in fact personally I found an easier way to do that is to apply force inside the rotor or the rotating arm and in the direction away and when I do that I get a backload very easily so we try it on the other side so I'm just applying pulling the rotating arm slightly away and this is gentle and it's just engaged very slightly. Now that doesn't mean that the cuff will open. What's actually happened here is the first part of the, the ratchet teeth here is actually slightly rounded which allows it to just ride up over, start riding up over the teeth, but only enough to backload and then with it back loaded we have a fast deployment that locks let's back load that by my little technique and that is very quick and easy that's my personal take on it it's not what TCH say they say that you apply force and not a lot of, oh there we go, so for me that doesn't work so well. I find it much easier just applying a little bit of force in this direction to get the back load. And here we have a little aside in terms of a little digression I took in looking at handcuffs in general and taking a really nice look at the TCH and that is with the TCH design uh, what we actually have is called a triple pull so in the ratchet mechanism We'll open a, a set of these up in a second and have a look that there's actually three independent arms that each separately engage with the ratchet. Now, that's a, a TCH feature and is something that actually did become slightly highlighted with a an investigation I or an aside I took into uh, specialized handcuff keys. So in fact, I have a couple of modified keys and with a standard TCH key, we have the key flag at a certain size, which is obviously a perfect match for TCH. Then I had one modified key with a a key flag that's been reduced and here I have a key based on the tool ultimate handcuff key which is the organization or open organization of lock pickers which is in this case a modified TCH key with a reduced flag, with a split for certain high security models. And I'm going to use those to demonstrate the triple pull. 
So when we look inside, what you should be able to see, let's pop that arm over, are in the same way that the handcuff is a layered construction, the pulls also you can see, so inside the cuff you can see two sections and the pull you should be able to see three. When I operate them with a, a proper key, all three are moving as one. If I take uh, one of the modified keys, so imagine you're using a piece of wire or something in an attempt to pick the lock. And here, as I turn this key, you can now see that the key flag is too small to operate all three pulls. Instead, only two out of the three are moving. And what that means is the handcuffs won't come undone because one of the three is still locking it. So the triple pull being a TCH feature, making them extremely difficult to pick. Now with the universal handcuff key, there's a, there is a little trick and that is simply, or if I just put it all the way in and turn it, I'm getting mainly, well it's just turning the three, mainly two of the paws moving. But what you would do is just pull it slightly out and easily move all three. This is a, a sort of specialized key for collectors or someone that might want a key that opens various different handcuffs. But the critical point here being TCH, triple pull, high security, very difficult to pick, which you can see. So just a few comments on handcuffing styles. Uh, I'll also include some stills in the video so that you can get a better view of how that works. Um, in effect, you've got handcuffing to the front of the body, which when using chain handcuffs really is all you can count. So you have the typical what's called palm to palm, then if you handcuff to the rear, because your arms tend to turn, you get back to back. So that'd be behind the body. But you see here, the hands are both in the same direction, which actually gives more striking power or ease of trying to escape potentially. So the hinged and the rigid now introduce what's called the stack. And the stack is where, instead of the hands going through in the same direction, you now have one in one direction and one in the other, which makes it much more awkward to resist. So you can have front stacked and you can have rear stacked, which is quite often very uncomfortable for the person who's cuffed. So we've now had a really good look over TCH and different styles of handcuffs, their security features, TCH's twin lock, different key styles, handcuffing styles and techniques, the accessories and so on. So thank you for joining me and remember, get informed, be prepared, stay sharp.